How's it guys? Welcome back to Black Overland. My name is Liam and today I'm installing a water pump in my off-road trailer. So this is my Conqueror Courage off-road trailer. It comes standard out the factory with a 90 litre water tank situated in the underbelly of the trailer. Really nice to keep that sense of gravity low for off-roading. The issue is though that the tap out that tank is gravity fed, which means that when the water level gets low, there's almost no pressure, and you have to drop the nose of the trailer to get any water out the tank. So to get around that, I'm gonna put a 12 volt pump in the nose cone of the trailer. Done quite a bit of research online before choosing a pump, and generally the most recommended is the Pentair Showflow. So I've gone for the 2095204112, and that one I find will have the right amount of pressure for my needs. There are more powerful pumps around, because the length of plumbing in the trailer is not really particularly long, I don't want something that's too powerful because it might blow the pipes. What's nice about this, this um, is that it comes with a filter and uh, the connection settings too. The filter is great so that you can clear any sediment that may have um, settled in the bottom of your water tank. For the installation we're going to need a few basics. I've got 8 more wire to connect the pump up to the electric board. I've got some stainless steel mounting screws with washers. Important that it's stainless steel so it doesn't corrode. Uh, T pieces, these are 13 mil T pieces. Some elbows, also 13 mil. Um, a few rubber grommets to run the plumbing through the steel panels of the trailer without chafing it. I've got a water pump switch which fits to my control panel. I've got some stainless steel elbows Stop cocks and basic plumbing fittings, stainless steel hose clamps, I've got a 10mm inner diameter hose for the plumbing and then basic drill bits, I've got a 4.5mm here, hole saw and a step bit and lastly some terminal connections. I started off with a rough diagram of the nose of the trailer and then I converted that to a schematic and that helped me to just choose all the parts that I needed to get. Right, so this is the underneath of the trailer. Here's the 90 litre water tank and it's got two feeds that come to one tap over there. So all I'll do is I'm going to cut that, cut an inch out or so, put a T in, then run another line to here, cut a hole in the bottom of the trailer, put a grommet in and an elbow and then feed that into the nose cone. I need to be quite mindful of where I'm drilling in the nose cone. I've got my two batteries here. So the idea is I'm going to mount the pump on this panel and then the hole where the water pipe will come through will be down there. So I fitted a 20 more grommet in, which fits so snug there. I've just made up this little sample. And you can see I'll put the pipe through and that makes a perfect tight fit. There's no chance of water getting in there. I've also touched up the rim with a little bit of touch up paint so that no rust can develop either. Okay, so now that I've measured up my hole, I'm in a position to cut this and I want to cut a space out so that once I put the T in, this pipe is still at the same angle. The reason being is because having this a bit taut means that it's not on the brake and I don't want it to rub on the brake because it could cause wear and tear. So I want to keep it as tight as possible and I'm keeping the original tap in should the pump fail or for any reason we're not using the pump I still have access to the gravity fed pump uh, tap. So notice I'm not using hose clamps here. Two reasons. Um, this is a 10 mil inner diameter and this is a 13 mil outer diameter T. And also this is the non-pressurized side. So I'm going to use stainless steel hose clamps in the pressurized side of the pump instead of the non-pressurized. Okay, these are on here nice and securely and you can see having it tight here means there's no rub against the brake. The space inside the nose cone is quite cramped so it makes sense to me to 
solder the positive and the negative wires onto the pump before I install it. And then after I've soldered I just like to seal it with heat shrink. I measured up where I need to put the pump inside the nose cone, marked it off, and then I made a little template of the feet. It's got these little rubber mountings, because it vibrates a lot when it's in, it's in use. Um, the rubber mountings just absorb the vibration. So I've made a little template of where those little rubber mounts are, marked it on the outside of the trailer. Now I know exactly where to mount it. Okay, so this is the little section of plumbing that I've made up that connects to the outflow of the pump. That's the connector to the outflow. This one will then connect to the geyser, and this one's going to go and connect to the cold water tap. These are just stainless steel elbows. Right? And I will make two holes in the wall of the trailer, of the nose cone. These will fit on the inside. This is going to go through the hole and then that will just tighten it in place on both sides. Then my external connections will then just connect onto this. So the hole is like literally just a half a millimeter too small. So I'll just put some sandpaper around the drill bit and I'll clean it out a bit with that. Now that I've put my elbows through and connected them. I've just put some plumber's tape on and these stopcocks have a little, sh little plastic handle and I'm trying to get them to angle that way so that if any stones and stuff fly up they hit the stainless steel not the plastic handle. That's going to be a bit tricky. Yeah. What I thought. So I'll put some more plumber's tape in there so that it gets tighter at a different angle. So now that I've lined them up, I actually turned the stopcock and I realized that that is the closed position, which still makes them vulnerable for stones coming off the car. So I've just unscrewed the handle and I'll put it on reverse and then, if I'm not mistaken got like a little glove screw there there we go, so that did nothing because I put it on back the same way that I had it <laughs> okay, so having got it lined up to protect the um, little handle, I realized that uh, with the handle flat, um, this is actually open. So you don't want that to be open, I want to be in the closed position. So I just swapped the handles around, I unscrewed them and then I put them the other way. So that now is open and that's closed and that should provide a fair bit of protection from any flying stones that come off there. Okay, next is to wire up the pump. So that's part one of the video with the plumbing done. I still need to wire it up to the control panel, but I'm going to do that in my second video. If you like this and you find it helpful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time on Black Overland. Cheers.